Hello everyone, welcome back to the Hastafi Montargo's channel. During the past few videos I explained how the Ponson Condenser Distributor works and how the Ballast Resistor works. Today's video is about how the Electronic Ignition Distributor works. We're going to be focusing on the HEI setup, which is one of the simplest ones, so it's easy to understand. I'm going to get this camera up close so you can see it better. Let's get started. Okay, so now that we have the camera up close, before we go over the operation, let's take a look at the parts involved. So we have a picture of a distributor from a top view with the distributor cap removed, which would be this one. And I already said this is a high energy ignition design, which is the General Motors. Here inside the distributor you have the pickup coil, you have the vacuum advance mechanism, the ignition module that's inside, you have a radio interference capacitor, and the ignition coil is mounted on top of the distributor cap. There's a plastic cover that covers the coil. Obviously the drawing shows it removed so it's easier to see and there's the ignition switch that sends the current to the distributor so now that we know the parts involved we're going to go over the operation the similarity between electronic ignition and the points and condenser setup is that the ignition coil still needs an on and off signal to collapse the magnetic field so there is current sent to the cap and to the rotor and from them to each cylinder what makes the electronic ignition more efficient and more durable is that there are no points anymore Instead of points and condenser, there's a magnetic pickup coil. And if you saw the other videos, the distributor shaft had a cam with as many cam lobes as cylinders. This is not a cam per se, but this would allow the reluctor to work. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and obviously there's eight on the outside too. So every time the teeth of the retaining timer align with the teeth of the pole piece, there's an induced voltage in the pickup coil the signals the ignition module to open the ignition coil primary circuit. Now the ignition coil still has to have power so when you turn your key on there's power sent to the coil and there's also power sent to the ignition module which in your ignition module it would be B battery C for coil and on this HEI setup they actually plug from underneath and then there's a metal tab right there that connects them together and then there's the wire that comes from the ignition coil and here from the ignition module where, where you see C goes to the coil it comes through here to this tab and it goes to the signal wire of the coil same thing there's a metal tab right here on this setup and this is where you can connect your tachometer another thing that you're going to see in this design is a capacitor it almost looks like a condenser this is all one piece it connects into the ignition module and if you look at this coil there's a black wire that connects to the metal frame of the ignition coil and there's a metal tab in the center that bolts to the body and this is where this wire is connected to and is connected to the radio interference capacitor and that's so you don't get noise in your radio and this is not to be confused with a condenser from a point system it has a different purpose the dwell was adjusted when the gap of the points was adjusted and on the electronic ignition the dwell is controlled by the ignition control module so it's not mechanically adjustable it's already been programmed into the module and it's going to vary depending on the RPMs now the vacuum advance mechanism is going to adjust the timing through the pickup coil by either advancing or retiring the time where these two align and obviously this vacuum canister is going to operate through engine vacuum and as the vacuum signal from the engine increases or decreases it's going to move an arm and it's going to adjust the ignition timing now let's move on to some basic troubleshooting let's say you don't have spark and first thing you got to do make sure you're receiving power right here you turn your key on that way you know that the ignition coil is receiving power and then right here in your tachometer lead you can connect your test light so you can connect these two right here once you know that this has power to make sure that it's flashing on and off if this is flashing on and off, the coil is your problem. If it's not, then it's going to be either an ignition module or the pickup coil. Most of the large auto parts stores have a machine inside that will test the ignition modules. They can do it for you for free. The pickup coil, you can test it yourself with an ohmmeter. The resistance of the pickup coil should be in between the two wires. You disconnect them, obviously, so it's not affected by the module. And the resistance in between these two terminals is going to be anywhere from 500 to 1500 ohms if the reading is infinite meaning that there is no resistance the pickup coil circuit is open so it needs to be replaced 
and if there is lower resistance than 500 to 1500 ohms the pickup coil is shorted so it also needs to be replaced another test that you can do make sure it's not shorted to ground so use the lead to touch one of the wires and the other one the metal part of the distributor it should be infinite so those are a couple tests that you can do if you suspect that you have a bad pickup coil remember it all starts right here it goes from here to the module and then to the ignition coil itself this is how the distributor looks in real life right here you have your module you have your capacitor this is how the pickup coil connects right there your vacuum advance this is a mechanical advance there are centrifugal weights right here you see the springs when the distributor shaft is rotating the weight of them moves them and overcome the spring pressure and that also adjusts the timing so the vacuum advance and the centrifugal weights adjust the ignition timing at different RPMs and different loads of the engine here's the coil so inside here are the metal tabs and this is how it connects right there this is where you connect your battery power and this is where you connect your tachometer right there and the high energy ignition distributor doesn't need a coil wire because the coil is mounted right on top you can see it and it makes contact with the ignition rotor and then the rotor sends the current to each cylinder so it's all in one unit and this setup was used in general motor vehicles for many many years so there you have it now you know how the electronic ignition distributor works and knowing how the poison condenser distributor works and enable you to see the difference and understand how the system evolved. Thanks for watching today's video. We'll see you next time.